What we're going to be doing now is pre-treating a dark shirt. Uh, we've created a little jig just to kind of pre-treat just the surface that I want to print on it. It isn't absolutely necessary. You can actually use a box or even an old platen or something to that order. But what we've done is actually created a little lid here. To actually hold the shirt up into place and basically it's the size of an adult size platen here. I'll tuck the excess up underneath there. So that way when I pre-treat, I'm only pre-treating the surface that I'm going to print. Lay this back down. And this is our Wagner sprayer that we use to actually pre-treat the shirt. Uh, there is a proper technique of doing this. Um, I will prime up the actual sprayer itself, just like any other sprayer, the nozzles have a tendency to get droplets in it. And if we get an inconsistency or too much pretreatment in one area, you could have washout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime this off to the side, and then I'm going to start applying my pretreat. Um, I'm going to do it as slow as I need to to get a certain consistency of pretreat onto the actual garment itself. So once I've got the primer prim or the sprayer primed up. I will start with three horizontal bands and then two vertical bands. And about as far away as you hold this from your sprayer, or uh, from your surface, is about how f wide your cone of your spray is. So I'm going to hold it about eight to ten inches away. And I'm going to start off of the side and finish off the side, sort of like painting a car or a fence. So that way there's not an over uh, spray on the edges. I do not do it in an S turn because uh, we would have a buildup of tree treatment around the edges and what we're trying to get is a very consistent print and a consistent pre-treatment. Those are my three horizontal bands. What I'm going to do now to do the vertical bands is I'm actually going to turn the gun sideways so that way the cone flattens out. And what I'm looking for is the consistency on the actual shirt surface itself. You should be able to just see the fuzz pop up, just sort of like a morning dew on the grass. And after I get that consistency, I'll use my little foam roller and actually roll this into the shirt itself to really get it into the fabric. So that way, once I pull it off of here, I will take it over and do a pre-curing, basically a pressing of the shirt at a higher pressure on the actual heat press itself, so that way it can really solidify that pretreatment into the fabric itself. So that way it'll also give us a nice base to print a good white ink on. Remove the shirt from the actual jig that I've created. Being careful not to fold it over on itself or anything like that. We're actually pressing it up onto the heat press, making sure that there's no wrinkles. And we're going to do a pre-pressing. What this pre-pressing does is actually mat down the fibers so that way we can get a really good underbase of a white ink. I prefer using parchment paper so it doesn't leave the actual shimmery look to it as if using the Teflon. And I will increase the pressure just a little bit by a couple extra turns on the actual heat press itself. I will be uh, curing this at about 325 for about 12 to 15 seconds just to really mat down the fibers themselves. So after about that 12 or 15 seconds, we'll be ready to print. Removing the parchment paper, and then placing onto our platen, and then into our printer itself. <laughs> 